So it's Wednesday, and I'm heading downtown for a chat with Alan Weaver of the Dreamweaver Show on RadioPhoenix.org. So uh, that's happening. So here we go. Hey, welcome back. Dreamweaver here on RadioPhoenix.org. Well, that was a little mixed set, last set, huh? Will Kimbrough uh, ended it up. When you, uh, yeah, when you come around, sorry about that, when you love and come around. Michael Fronte, hello, bonjour, and Warren Zevon, lawyers, guns, and money, started that set off. Well, as promised, uh, I've got a treat in this next half hour for you. The band Mr. Lucky is putting on a benefit this weekend, which I think is pretty cool, and I want to hear more about that. They're also going to be playing some music along with some other bands. And here's a little taste. The song is called We'll Go. That is local Arizona band Mr. Lucky. And uh, Mr. Lucky is a, uh, a band that's putting on a special benefit this weekend at the Road Bar. And I'm going to talk more about that. But right now, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Mr. Lucky frontman, Douglas Preston. Douglas, welcome. Hi, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Well, it'll have you on better if I hit your amp, right? Oh, okay. There we are. I hear you nice. <laughs> well, I'll try that again. Thank yeah. you for having me on. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So, Douglas, I moved to the area just a year ago, and just getting tuned in, really, to the local Phoenix music scene. Uh, your name has come up with, as well as quite a few other bands, and a lot of folks have been uh, kind enough to stop by in recent weeks and visit with me, which is a pleasure. So again, welcome you, a uh, local Phoenix band. I'd like you to uh, kind of bring me up to speed, not on the Phoenix music scene so much. We will talk about that, but tell me about Mr. Lucky. Uh, well, Mr. Lucky is a project that's been going on for about three years. Uh, I was previously in a band that kind of dissipated, and it, just a group of friends, that people that I had already played music with or that I had just met and was interested in playing music with. Um, it just kind of got together with kind of a central idea of the type of songs that we wanted to put together and the type of music that we wanted to put together. So we've been slugging away, trying to get some songs written and recorded and get, get out to the people. Tell me about the other members of Mr. Lucky. Uh, our drummer, his name is Phil Popovich. Mm -hmm. He's been playing drums since probably about the time he started walking. Right. <laughs> um, really great guy. Very, very good drummer. Um, and uh, classically handsome. Mm -hmm. Very, very, he's definitely the, the showpiece of our band. Handsome Phil. Handsome Phil. All right. Uh, on bass is Ricky Powell. Okay. Uh, Ricky has had a, a very storied musical career. He has been playing bass for a very long time. He's been on tour with some major ska bands back in his younger days. He uh, most recently was involved in a musical project called El West with his twin brother Brian Powell, mm -hmm. also another prominent local artist. Uh, before that, they were in a band called Prague. Um, so. Lot, lot, lots of stuff going on with him. Very talented guy. How long has the Mr. Lucky project been in existence? Uh, I think we're coming up on about three years now. Okay. So so you made it over the hump. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You've got a couple of EPs you just handed me here, and the Tyrant being the most recent. When did Tyrant come out? Um, it had a soft release a couple of months ago. Okay. We, haven't, we haven't pushed it out to all the uh, online retailers and stuff like that yet. Mm -hmm kind of holding off, making sure we're totally happy with it. Right. So Brand new music. Brand new music. Awesome. And we're also in the process of writing our first full length. Uh, but I, I, earlier in the year, I was promoting it as coming out later in the year, and mm -hmm. now it's looking like early next year. So. Well, there's unfortunately, I'm sure, uh, a lot of things to do during your day. Absolutely. Being a, being a musician in a fairly young band is not generally the only thing that occupies your time. No, you know? no, no. I'm no, sure no. there's day jobs and maybe families and, and so on. And 
so it's a lot to get out there, not to mention the, the cost of studios and, and so forth to put something out. So good on you for having these two efforts here. Douglas, tell me a little bit about uh, before Mr. Monkey and, and go past that. I understand you've been in the Valley maybe since right around 2000, 2001, something like that. Uh, you're a transplant from where? Uh, originally from El Paso, Texas. Yeah. Uh, did the bar scene out there for a number of years. Before that, growing up in El Paso, is that where you grew up? Uh, well, I was Army brat, okay. so, so I grew up kind of everywhere, but primarily I spent I spent most of my childhood in El Paso. Yeah. Okay. When did uh, music come into your life? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's an interesting story. I uh, I was I mean I I've always been interested in music. My parents have tapes of me as like a three year old right. singing along to stuff. Sure. Uh, but I was in a high school art class, and some friends of mine had seen a guitar at my house that had nothing to do with me. It was, right. it was my dad's guitar. But they needed a guitar player for the stage band for the high school. Right. And in in their infinite wisdom, they thought, well, Doug has a guitar. I'm, I'm sure he could play guitar. And they came and shanghaied me out of this art class that I was in. And really? I uh, went from zero to being in stage band in one afternoon. Serious? Yeah. Now, so, so you hadn't played the guitar at all? Never touched one. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure I fiddled with it, Picked but it up I and tried to figure out what it was. Yeah. Yeah, but no serious attention at all. So, awesome. luckily, I, I I have a fairly good ear. So I sat in the back of the class the whole rest of the year and like plucked out piano parts. Right. And then went home that summer and learned how to play guitar. Oh, great story. Peer pressure is a wonderful thing sometimes. Yeah, and yeah, it will motivate. Yeah. Or destroy. Yeah. <laughs> in this know. case, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, um, how long before you start, started writing and actually creating your own music? Um, a good, a good long while. Was uh, it? Probably, probably four or five years. Okay. So, uh, after high school, I fell in with some friends and started writing some really terrible songs. And <laughs> progressively, they got a little bit better and right. a little bit better. And this band turned into that band, and that band turned into this band. And mm -hmm. So, as the road goes, yeah, you know, that's the way the work is. And what brought you, brought you to Phoenix? Uh, work, actually, my day job. I had an opportunity to move out here and just was ready for something different after spending so long in El Paso, I mean, like most of my life. Sure. So No matter where you live, you get the itch. you gotta, you got to go look around and sure. see what's out there. Sure. Yeah. So things are good in Phoenix for you? Uh, yeah, it's worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm. a, a, another motivating factor is when I was looking at moving out here is right when the whole Tempe boom was happening. Right. The blossoms had just been signed, the refreshments had just been signed, and I'm like, why am I not living there? I love sure. all this music. Sure. And wow. so I came out. Came out. Well, and, and fortunate for us, um, a lot of people have done the same thing. As I mentioned, in a fairly new town, but one of the first things I learned was, uh, and, and I was turned, told by another musician that uh, it kind of felt like, in some ways, this was, uh, felt like the new Austin. Uh, it, it, to an extent, yeah. I mean, and, but it's. I also think it's a lot easier to be seen here. Really? Um, a lot of people from El Paso, like the people that I grew up with, a lot of them moved to Austin mm -hmm. because that was that was what you did. You grew up, you got out of school, you went to Austin. Right. And a lot of them moved back, and mm -hmm. it, it was it's it's like being a very small fish in the ocean because mm -hmm. there's just so much. It's like moving to New York or Nashville or something. Right. There's, there's just such an infusion of musicians that. It's hard to get noticed. Yeah. Uh, out here, not quite that situation. Yeah. Not quite LA or Austin or New York. It's it's a little more personal. So crowded in, in Austin that uh, a lot of bands uh, have a hard time making any money on gigs because the places don't have to pay. Right. Or yeah. you have to pay to get to the gig. Get yeah. So it's uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, there's a good and bad side, I guess. Well, I'm uh, glad you're in Phoenix. And uh, what I want to do is take a minute. To, uh, to talk to our listeners and come back and have you play us a song live if you would. That would be fantastic. Awesome, thank you. Hey, are you still haunted by that old love that's hanging around your driveway? Is your front yard cluttered with the remains of your old romance? Are the neighbors starting to shake their heads because you just don't let go? Well, then it's time to get rid of that old car, boat, motorcycle, or anything else with a motor except lawnmowers for a tax deduction for you and a charitable contribution to Radio Phoenix. For more information about Radio Phoenix's CARS donation program, just call 1-877-919-7749. That's 1-877-919-7749.
Radio Phoenix and your neighbors thank you in advance. You know, folks, we are a community radio station, and uh, we're your radio station. So give us a call, join up, make a donation, support this media that you can also be a part of. Well, today, my guest is Mr. Douglas Preston from Mr. Lucky, a local area band with a, an awesome reputation. And uh, Mr. Lucky having a benefit show this weekend. We're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, Douglas has brought his uh, guitar with him, so we're going to put him put it to use, I guess. And uh, hear a song live. What are you going to play for us, Douglas? This is called Miles to Go. Miles to Go. Oh, my. 
guys. Miles to go. That was off of the, uh, the new release that's not quite released yet. Not quite released. Uh, called Tyrant by Mr. Lucky. Who's the songwriter in the bus? Um, primarily me. Okay. Primarily. Uh, we, we had a fourth member up until towards the beginning of this year. His name's Jack Howell. Uh -huh. You probably have heard his name. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a local musician, songwriter, producer. He owns a local studio. Uh, he's involved in a number of other music projects as well, and that that kind of that kind of preci precipitated like his exit from the band as he just wears so many hats that right. there's only so much time in the day. Sure. So. Sure. But uh, while he was in the band, he and I shared writing duties a lot. So. Mm -hmm. Talk about that process now. How, like, how do you guys explore a new song once you either bring it to the table or, or it's there in whatever manner? Um, the three of you now, right? It's a three-piece band. For the moment, yeah. um, How do you explore that? What's the best way just to get it out live and, and play with it a little bit, or you work it out in the studio, or what works best for you? Well, I mean, it, it's kind of all of that. It's kind of all of that. Some songs start on my couch while uh -huh. I'm watching TV. Sure. And I will uh, I will do a very simple audio recording on my phone, and then bring it to the guys, and we'll flush it out from there. Some uh, start out as just a straight random jamming of, of music while we're rehearsing other stuff. Some of you will start playing a rhythm or a melody and we'll just fool around with that for a bit until it, you, you, can, you can tell after a couple of minutes whether it's something or whether it's nothing. Right. Uh, and if it's something, then you start kind of pushing it into shape, see if you can make something that's solid out of it. And typically we'll record that and then go back after and kind of refine at that point. Sure. You consider yourself more of a uh, studio band or a live band? What do you like better? That, that's hard. Um, I love being on stage. That, that wasn't always the case. It took, it took me a long time to get comfortable enough to really enjoy it, but right. I'm at that point now. I really love being on stage. Nice. Um, but I can also spend 12 hours in the studio and yeah. look, oh, it's dark. Oh, it's Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. So. Well, cool. Yeah. It's, uh, that to me, not be a musician, but I played a little bit, but just music in general. I'm one of these that can just bury myself privately and quietly and, and be around music uh, all day long. And like you said, it, it just time passes and it passes easy that way. Yeah, you just get lost in it. Sure, sure. Well, uh, one of the reasons that sparked my uh, reaching out to you was this benefit we're doing this week, and I thought it was a, a pretty cool thing. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but Friday is World Food Day, something like that? That is correct. Yeah, so so based on World Food Day, um, you are holding a benefit over at the Rogue Bar. Correct. Um, we actually started off with a different date mm -hmm. for the show, and then it got moved to Friday. I see. And we were trying to figure out how to, how to make just a show into like an event. And so I got on the internet, and I started looking up what kind of things were happening on October 16th, and right. by the way, a lot of horrible, horrible things throughout history have happened. <laughs> oh, really? Just just awful groups of people killing people. Oh, and wow. It, just not a great day overall. Uh, but one of them that caught my eye was World Food Day. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, it's World Food Day. Thanksgiving is coming up. Right. It, it's always a good time doing a food drive because you're actually helping people. Sure. And there's, there's no end of people that need help. So why not? And so that sparked the idea, and then we started getting other bands on board. We uh, reached out to St. Mary's Food Bank, and they were more than happy to get us, you know, a collection box and the details on how to get the food to them. Right. So it's, it's kind of just taken off from there. Nice. Nice. We're good on you. Um, we're not going to talk about ticket prices, really, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of donation or a ticket to get in the door. It, it, is there some sort of raffle that I hear? Yeah, it's a, it's a small amount to get in the door mm -hmm. that gets your raffle ticket as well as entrance. Okay. You get inside, we have some prizes that have been donated from local businesses, local artists, um, that'll be up for raffle. We're also bringing in some cupcakes. So if you want a cupcake, you can make a minimum you know, uh, monetary donation for that. Right. And all those proceeds are going to go to St. Mary's. Awesome. 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 Well, this has been a pleasure sitting with you, and I'm Thank glad you. you came down here. And you know, we've got uh, about uh, three minutes or so before the break. And you could probably take us out with some more live music if you're up for that. I would love to. The uh, the Rogue Bar, by the way, is at 423 North Scottsdale Road. If you want to know more 
about uh, Mr. Lucky Band, go to mrluckyband.com and you can learn there. I'm sure there's a Twitter and Facebook and all those things you can find as well. But uh, it, it's been a real pleasure to have Mr. Douglas Preston here. I appreciate your visit and uh, it was nice meeting you. And, and you, thank you for having So that was RadioPhoenix.org. Real pleasure playing. Um, so we hope to see you on Friday and we hope that you have a great rest of your week. And thanks for checking it out.